Hi, this is Ant Miner Repair, and tonight we're going to reflow a chip. And what it means by reflowing is basically take the chip, resolder it without pulling it off and putting it on, surround it in flux, heat it up, refloat it, and then put it back. It's basically <coughs> a lot simpler to do than to um, put on a new chip by scratch because I'm not adjusting anything underneath um, the the usually it works but the problem is these guys don't have the right solder or the solder's bad and they end up breaking again but um, with this board this is a t17 board I am um, uh, it was testing funny sometimes it tests that all ASICs are here and some not and then when I went to look at it most all the chips um, if you've ever seen the the Chinese uh, hashboard repairers when these chips lose all their surface the copper surface you can't solder on them it doesn't look like this chip which is probably hard for you to see but um, this chip has solder all over it this chip has a center of stainless steel so you can't get the chip to stick so what they do is they put they put glue here they put glue here on either side of the chip and you can see the two glue it's some sort of uh, plastic polyurethane sealant and then they put thermal paste on the chip and then they glue it down and so this board basically had this whole center of this guy um, glued down and and I guess it works um, I think the chips run hotter you know in all honesty but the problem is when you have a problem and you're gonna be more apt to have a problem because these guys have this cooling system on it um, you, you're you go into test with your with your multimeter like the test points here or or y you know you're testing to see if there's voltage this doesn't conduct electricity the thermal paste it doesn't the, the heat sink doesn't get to the chip to conduct electricity so so basically when you have a weird board which this one had an uh, had a transient voltage issue is really difficult to, to find and I just get kind of fed up with these and I say alright I'm just gonna take them all off and I do have a technique for soldering chips on here you have to clean it super good then you have to score it just a little bit on the surface and I can get solder to stick here and I have a video on that if you want to see it so anyway if you like this content please please do hit the subscribe button and and that way you'll know when I produce these or that little bell you'll get notified hey I've got a new video out um, and a plug for our discord 950 people that are interested in repairing hash boards are on that discord so if you have questions for me you can post them to YouTube but I'm more likely to say come to discord we could have a conversation you can send me pictures I could send you pictures so so discords good that way um, and I just I just received a certain level with Yahoo um, I think they have a community I may be able to do some things I've still got to research it so and then thirdly tonight I'm really jazzed my Yahoo 1000B workstation which is right here um, it broke I bought it it broke I used the heck out of it I use it and use it and use it and so the hot plate stopped heating and um, so I I contacted Yahoo and I said hey um, I got some problems so they had me make a video of the, the problems I had and um, in less than a week I've got a new one so hats off to Yahoo support um, they also seem really interested as like well what could have caused it to fail can you take some videos and and I got to poke around it and send them some data and it got sent to the engineers in China that are designing it they they really want to make a quality product so anyway I'm really happy with the support I got from them um, great great company so far and even if you guys are just starting out you have that that blue um, hot air gun with the soldering iron um, you know there's a generic brand they break really fast you can buy Yahoo stuff Ihua, I think is the right way to pronounce it you can buy their stuff I, I just think for some reason that lasts longer so um, my hats off to them thank you they're not sponsoring this for sure um, but I just happy with their customer service so um, all right so so I so I strip all the heat sinks off this and of course then I put it on the tester and it works it says all chips found so great all chips found so what do I do so I said well 
Okay, and I, I kind of let this board sit because I didn't want to deal. This, these are really time consuming to put heat sinks back on because they, they just have lost their finish. I had to clean up all the thermal paste. I had to um, peel all the glue. You can I can see where the glue was stuck and sometimes resistors get pulled out. It's just heavy labor and I had a lot of other boards so I set it aside. So this board's been sitting for a while and, and, and now I, I, I'm ready to take a look at it and I, I'm going to start putting the heat sinks back on. And um, so I test it. It says all tests, all, all all things found. It says, well, you know, maybe I was mistaken. So, or maybe I moved something when I pulled off the stuff and cleaned something off, or 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 touched something. So I, you know, start putting heat sinks on, and uh, all of a sudden, ten ASICs found. So I said, ah, okay. So I have ten ASICs found. So I I start messing around. And I go to the 11th chip, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So usually when you have a number of ASICs found, exception of zero, um, you go to the next chip. It could be the chip before, it could be the chip, but typically, you know, most of the time it's the next chip. And so I, so I get my probes. Yeah, I, I get my probes like this, and I'm saying, well, okay, so let me get it in here. So I, so I have to... I have to dig in this, and then, you know, I have to put my probes on, and then I try to test it. It says all ASICs found. So I said, great, pull it off, all ASICs found. So I, I just took the board, I kind of, you know, tweaked a little bit, back to 10 ASICs found. This time I just, I just lightly pushed on the chip and tested it, and all ASICs found. So, so this chip, I believe, and maybe more, I don't know, has a loose connection. There's a break in the solder somewhere. Um, I looked at it really close, I've cleaned it. It still had the thermal paste all stuck in there. So tonight, um, I will reflow this and get that solder to melt again. I gotta make sure it has a rear, yeah, all the rear heat sinks are on. And I'm gonna use my brand new Yahoo. I was so excited, I don't even have it all put together, but, but um, I've been without the station for about a week and I'm, I've got some stuff to do. So this is the guy. Two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. This is the guy we're going to work on. I've cleaned him up. Um, I think the way I want to do this. Let me move my camera now. Give you a little different angle if I can. It's probably right where I'm working, but um, let's see if I can. Okay, so I think what I'd like to do. I'm going to go ahead and turn this guy on. It's going to get noisy. Okay, I've, I've set the base plate to 183 degrees. This is the chip we want to do. The golden rule is when you're doing this, especially on this, is one, it's level, um, and this is pretty level. And I want to be able to push on this without the thing moving. Um, if it moves while it's resistant to solder, you may shove off the chip. So that's the only danger of reflowing this. It's a lot easier than putting on a new chip. Um, it's to, is if you move your hands, um, and this is really loose and you're pushing on it and it, it shoves off. So you gotta be careful. May hold it here, um, but, so I'll get in there with the heat gun right here, 450 degrees, um, wait till I see some, some movement with the solder on the legs. Then I'll um, apply a little pressure toward the middle, heat it a little more, and then I'm gonna let off. So right now, this guy's gonna work on getting warm and it takes a while to heat up, so. Um, if you if you find boards this way where the center and let me see what I'm pointing I'm pointing right in the light band but maybe off a little bit if you find that the solder is off and it's not just copper and it's not just flat solder um, there is a way to do it and I have a video on it and basically you, you take some alcohol you clean the heck out of this and actually take tweezers like this and I, I scrape it and, and there's some residue of some old flux, burn flux. I make sure all the burn stuff is on. And then to tell you the truth, the Russian guys laughed at me, but they said, why don't you just replace the chip? And maybe I should, but chips are 22 bucks a piece. And I'm probably gonna have to replace it anyway, anyway, because it's, it's good. And then I kind of score this just a little bit. You don't dig down in silicone, but you um, go along here and give the, um, you give the solder a, a place to grab and then the way I put the solder on now is is I'll because I'll turn this guy upside down and I'll actually apply the solder here heat it up off a of solder paste and then I'll 
put a tiny bit of flux down and set this guy on there after it's been heated good and it goes on so man this stinks because it's brand new it's smoking let's see how we feel oh yeah it's, it's working though so we just sit and wait a little bit I think it's how it works I get my tweezers ready make sure my hot gun temperature is set to 450 let me see here and I turn the air all the way down you don't want to blow the caps the capacitors and resistors off so um, let's just cook for a while I'm gonna turn on another loud fan here just to suck in the smoke off this solder stuff you can kind of hear the fan so I have a fume extractor and we just wait a little while that's the problem with doing this on videos and live and I don't edit my videos it's just what they are um, you get you get some time to kill but it's kind of nice So yeah, that, that plate's working. I don't usually put my hand... Yeah, we're getting good and hot. So it's at 172 now. Yeah, of course, the board's a little bit behind times. Um, I'm just watching the thermometer on the, the 1000B. Okay, so we're at 180, so I'll just... I'll wait a couple more minutes. Um, I do need to add flux to that chip. I need to add flux to that chip. It's right here. So really what's nice about reflow is the chip's not going to slide around unless you slide it around. It'll usually stay put. Alright, so that's good. I may want to add flux later so I keep it handy. But that flux will help, help um, melt all that solder. So For sure. Just give it a minute or two. I want that board nice and hot. I want the chip nice and hot, so when I assault it with this 450 degree centigrade air, it's not going to blow up the chip because it expands too much. It's already getting warm slowly and has time, you know, the parts inside have time, or I say the solution or the material has time to to go up. Let me see, I'm working, see if I can, um, see if I can uh, change the light angle so I can show this better. How about, let's go this way. Okay, so we're working on that chip right there. So you might be able to see more. We'll see, I'm not doing any close-ups, but... That's pretty warm. Oh yeah, nice, nice. Alright, so here goes. I'm going to melt that solder. The only thing about it is I like this light a little bit behind, so let me get it farther. So we're still working here? Okay, I'm looking at my video monitor. Alright, here we go. I'm letting this guy warm up. You probably can't see it, but um, yeah, you're kind of looking down. So what you do when you heat this up, you'll start seeing the 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 balls of the legs start to twinkle which means they're uh, they're melted so I'm right at 450 they're starting to twinkle a little bit remember if this is stock solder this is leaded solder so it does take a little more to to do I want to make sure everything's good and melted. That's probably enough on this chip. I see everything around there. The flux has done its job. So I'm going to very carefully, I'm going to come in here right on the top of it. Just apply some pressure now, and I'm going to continue to heat just for a second while I'm pushing down. Okay, and I'll let up off that and just wait. Maybe blow on it a little bit to cool it off. Okay. Alright. So I'll turn off the soldering gun. I'll turn off the heater. Now, um, 
when I'm reflowing and I'm probably done for the night because because it's late um, I'll I'm going to turn off the solder back in. so if this was a new chip what I would do while it's still hot is pull it off at this point um, the solder set somewhat I would actually start testing diode resistances uh, but this isn't a new chip I, I know it's 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 uh, either going to work or not when I flex the board. I either I either connect it or not. It, if I'm still getting the 10 ASICs, I could pull it off. I could clean it up and I could put leaded solder on it, a better quality solder, and resolder it. Or I can throw a new chip on it. But usually, let me see, four chances out of five, this works. And I can put the board back in service. Although this, these, these things that are, are shiny in the middle, all these chips, um, this one's not so bad. This one has it. Um, take quite a while to get a heat sink on. Um, these have them on. They're there. I don't stress them too bad, but they're not going to come off even in heat. So that's the reflow process I use. Um, things are cooling off. I'll let this just sit for a little while. Before I shut down for the night, I'm going to go clean that up with alcohol so that flux doesn't sit there all day. And then tomorrow I'll test it and do that. So thank you for watching. This is a shorter video. Um, just, just wanted to say that is one solution to this. If you can start pushing on chips and find them working and not why they're on your bench, um, typically you can fix them here. In fact, if you test a chip and it's not letting the voltage through, this really is the first step. Before you pull the chip off and say I need to replace the chip and you think something's wrong with the chip, you would reflow it first to see if you fix the problem. Many times it fixes the problem. Okay? All right. Well, thank you for watching tonight. And um, uh, join our Discord. If you want to talk to us about this, join the Discord. There's, there's a bunch of people that know what they're doing on there. And there's some great ideas going around. So thank you tonight. And uh, talk to you soon.